Hi, it's Jo from Minerva. Today I'm going to be taking you on a whistle stop tour of some fabric cord, needle cord, corduroy cord, whichever you call it. And I want to show you the vast range of cord that is available on the Minerva website. Sometimes you might think cord is just for dungarees and 70s flares and geography teachers elbow patches, but actually these are some beautiful cord and they all behave a little bit differently and I want to take you through some of the features. I want to show you that there's a range of patterns to match with your cord, uh, more than just dungarees, that you can make a huge range of clothes from using cord. Today I'm wearing the Grainline Studio Scout Tee in a needle cord and uh, this is my sort of autumn top. It means I can wear it uh, with a cardigan but the front here has got that thickness of cotton so the wind doesn't blow through it and it's a really comfortable top. First up I'd like to start simple and easy so I would like to tell you a little bit about cord and once you know a little bit about the background of cord then that will help you choose on the website when you read down the descriptions. So what is cord? It is a woven fabric it has little ribs on it called whales and it is weighed with its weight by how many whales there are per inch, meaning how many little ridges are there per inch. The higher the whale number, the more little ribs there are, there are per inch, making it a lighter uh, baby cord. And the lower the number, then the thicker the ribs, because there's not so many ribs per inch, making a really thick, chunky jumbo cord. The little whales on the cord create a nap and a nap means that the fabric has a texture that's smooth in one direction and rough in another direction and not only does it um, affect the touch of the fabric it will also affect the colour because the, the little uh, whales will create a sort of shadow going in one direction and they will smooth down going in another direction so you need to make sure that when you buy cord fabric you buy enough fabric to cut your pieces um, with all of your grain lines going in the same direction. It can be tricky because you might think oh well I folded my fabric in half and you feel the top one and the top one feels smooth but your fabric might be laid out on the table where it goes um, nap in one direction and when you when it turns over it goes in the other direction the other way and you can see an example of that here. So the Minerva Maker Geo has explained how um, she has not got the nap right on her fabric and the effects of that and there's quite a good explanation underneath if you read it. The other thing to note when working with cord is that it's not a good idea to press it on the right side because if you press on the right side you'll crush all those whales and it will also change the colour as well so it'll change the texture but it'll change that shadow and the colour that you get so you always need to press it on the wrong side. The other way you could get around that is if you buy a crush cloth and the crush cloth um, has a cotton top and a foam base. This is a crush cloth, it has cotton here that you put the iron on and a very very spongy back and so the sponges sink themselves around the whales and don't crush it so much. When sewing with cord you might need to make a few adjustments on your sewing machine so you could try adjusting the pressure of the presser foot so that you're not crushing the cord into each other because if you've got right sides together the sort of the ribs can sort of grip on each other and walk along so you'll think you're started with your fabric um, right sides together with the ends matching and by the time you get to the end the one end seems longer than the other but it's crept along inside the whales made a little sort of like a caterpillar track really so you need to either tack it you need to make sure that your pressure foot the pressure on your presser foot is not too tight and the other thing you could try um, if you've got one for your machine is a walking foot which will take the two layers of fabric through the presser foot much more evenly. I'm going to start with a baby cord, which is um, a 21 whale cord. That means it's really, really fine. There's 21 little ridges per inch. And it's uh, you might think, oh, cord, 
that's going to be thick but this is the weight of a cotton or a poly cotton and so it's really suitable for children's clothes because it's not too thick it's 55 inches wide and it's 100% cotton and it's really good for making children's wear so little romper suits play suits like this for crawling around in um, are really great in cord because it's hard wearing on the knees but you can see how light the fabric is because I've used it to cover a button so it's not cord as you might think it a really thick fabric for making uh, a denim style skirt it's really quite lightweight the pattern that I've chosen to go with this baby cord is Simplicity 1566 it goes from baby to age two and it's the cord is suitable for making these little trousers which are really easy they're just um, two pieces folded in half and they've got a crotch seam and an inside leg seam and an elasticated waist and cord is also suitable for making these little dungarees here which is the sample that I've shown you so my first pick of my top 10 patterns today is Simplicity 1566 and baby cord. Of course, baby cord doesn't just come in solid plain colours, it also comes in a pattern. So um, I'm going to show you two beautiful fabrics known for their patterns, which is Dashwood Studios. And Dashwood Studios do a 21 well baby cord. That's this here. So it's the same weight as the other fabric this has got a beautiful pattern design it's really suitable for making tops like this so this is the Grainland Studio Scout Tee this is it here this comes in a size 0 to 18 but there is also the next size up so you can get um, a larger sizing and this one has a dart so this has uh, a dart on the bust the smaller size one doesn't have a dart on the bust. And so you can get this effect of having cord without having to have a whole dress or a pair of cord trousers. So just to wear a touch of cord with other fabrics is a really nice feeling. So I've chosen um, two Dashwood Studio fabrics, a geometric print, this one here, and a floral print. And that's my second choice of fabric and pattern. If Dashwood Studio is a little bit out of your price range, you can also get uh, a more budget patterned cord. That's this one. And it's the same in its texture. It's got that um, baby cord, 21 whale. But this one is at the lower budget end. It is quite narrow, this one's only 43 inches, so you would need to make sure that you're definitely going to get the right amount of fabric and get your nap going in the right direction and get the print going in the right direction. So you'd need to make sure that you were going to order enough fabric to cut your front and back on the fold. The other thing I like to do with cord is to um, mix it with other fabrics because it's quite stable. This has got a baby cord back and sleeves, but I loved this visco so much um, that I didn't want to chuck away the last final piece. So I've made the front in viscose and this is the um, Grainline Studio Scout Tee. Uh, and I've made the sides in cord. Look, I loved it so much. I didn't even have enough to cut a full front out. So I cut the front, then I added the last bit of cord along here. So this is a real stash busting top, but I do love wearing it. It's, it's, um, the cord doesn't make it too firm. The viscose is supported by the cord, so it's a good combination. So that's another way to use the uh, Grainline Studio Scout Tee. My next pattern choice for an easy sew is New Look 6843 which is a set of skirts, a pencil skirt, a skirt with a little side kit pleat and a skirt for lighter fabrics. But this one here is perfect for sewing in cord to make a winter skirt to wear with fit tights. You don't need very much fabric and it's your chance to practice putting in a zip. 
a cord skirt can look pretty casual see if this one's got buttons on the front it's got pockets uh, you can try ones with a back zip but again you can try different weights of cord for view C which is this one you can try a 21 well cord that's that baby cord that we've just been looking at for children's wear but it makes a nice light skirt and this is where you will get your pattern fabric so in 21 whale is where you will find more of the pattern fabrics and in the thicker fabrics is where you will more find um, solid colors so this is a Dashwood Studios one again beautiful bright colors I mean if you made a skirt in that you could wear navy with it you could wear teal with it you could wear the ochre color with it so a, a pattern skirt and cord lasts a long 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 time so that's my top pick for view C this one here a simple pencil skirt with a zip in if you want something a little warmer you could try view C in a jumbo cord which I'm going to show you now which is similar to what I've got on or you could try view E which is an A-line skirt which is the style that I've got on and this is a 4.5 whale cord so you, so you can see when you've only got four or five ribs per inch then you're getting a firmer fabric this isn't got any stretch and a little bit of stretch which makes it perfect for a skirt <clears throat> it comes in 12 different colors so if you've got pattern tops and you need a plain skirt then this jumbo cord is beautiful it's got a real winter feel to it and because of the thick ribs it has a little bit of a shine to it in different places so the nap is very obvious, you need to make sure that you're cutting on the flat, you're cutting each piece flat, not double, or uh, how you fold your fabric to cut two pieces means that the nap is going the same way on both sides. Fabric is 55 inches wide, it's 100% cotton, and this one is called teal, and it's described as medium to heavy weight. So this one would be suitable for dungarees or a pinafore with buckles because this one's got a little bit more weight to it the 21 well fabric is very very light you do see people make um things with uh bib and braces on in the 21 well but i always just think that's not the best choice it's great for the patterns but this is better for the weight My next pattern pick for beginners who are moving up their sewing skills a little bit is a classic. It's the Cleo Dungaree Skirt Dress by Tilly and the Buttons. And it's really, really simple to make. That's this one that I've got on now. It's not got a lot of top stitching, but you get the same effect of having a bib fronted dress. Um, it's got uh, a square front and it's got that scoop back so it doesn't cover too much of your back and then you get the straps that, which you can angle at the right angle for yourself i like to line the cleo my first cleo that i made i made a needle cord baby cord exactly what i've just been telling you i picked this most beautiful fabric it was too thin the weight of the buckles were too heavy for the bib um, and then I made an, and then I tried to line it and I couldn't really rescue it. But what I did learn from that process was that lining a Clio makes it a really comfortable winter dress because you tend to be wearing it with leggings or thick tights. And cord, the, the back of cord, because it's 100% cotton very often, will stick and drag to the, your undergarments. So um, I line a Clio, it's not difficult. You cut the same pieces out again. And then you, when you sew the edges, you don't just turn them over um, and add the facings, you add the lining instead. The fabric that I've chosen for the Clio is this beautiful jumbo cord. And it really is jumbo. This is 3.5 whales per inch. So it's got a really sort of furry texture, makes a very nice winter dress. This one's got a little bit of stretch in it. This has got 30% stretch. So this might help you if you've got a small waist to a large hip ratio, because if you have to cut a bigger size to get your hips, then you end up with sort of two wings here. 
so this one would help get a little bit of ease around your hips this one's quite expensive but uh, the joy of the Clio dungaree dress is that you don't need very much uh, material at all it is 55 inches wide so that means you can cut the two pieces the front and the back probably next door to each other you'll have to check um, it's got a very high nap on it so you need to make sure that you have your nap going in the right direction because they're so thick and velvety then you need to make sure that they're going in the same direction that you don't turn your pocket piece around by just sort of squeezing it in the corner as well um, it's 97% cotton and 3% elastine so it gives it 30% stretch the previous fabric that I recommended for the skirt would also work for this um, this one's not got so much stretch in it so if you know that you can fit the Clio and it fits well and you don't require that element of stretch then that's another great combo my next pattern pick is um, the Nina Lee Carnaby dress it's got that sort of 1960s shift dress vibe it's really easy to make but it's again a little advanced beginner project there's a little bit of adding pockets and some darts and a zip at the back I don't have a cord one that's on my sewing queue um, but it sort of works like this so it has a little zip down the back it has pockets at the front and you can change the insides if you want to make it quite funky it's also got a seam running along here so you can make the bottom one color and the top another colour so you could have this in plain cord and then you could have the bottom in a, a fancy pattern cord or you can make the dress in the whole uh, same colour I love wearing it with leggings it's a really seasonal changing dress I wear it in the summer with pumps with bare legs I wear it in the winter with a cardigan and thick tights it's really really uh, I mean it's not a versatile pattern in that it gives you lots of views but I, it's such a, a versatile dress in terms of the seasons it also has a sleeveless version which is view A and that's good in cord too if it's lined because you can wear it with a turtleneck or a polo neck or a long sleeve t-shirt underneath and boots and make it into a sort of winter outfit the fabrics that I've chosen are very very different let me show you what they are my first pick is back to Dashwood Studios 21 whale baby cord. So this is the fine one. So this is just cotton. It's got the feel of cotton. Um, you could wear this in the summer, um, unlined, just as a dress against your skin. It's not too thick. It's, it's nice and lightweight. It would make the dress. I liked it because it had that sort of geometric print. I think that goes with the sort of 60s lines of the pattern. You could make the short uh, sleeveless one uh, in this and line it. Um, so I might do a tutorial actually on how to line cord items that haven't got lining on the pattern. But lining cord really does give it uh, a winter comfort that you that you can't get by just wearing the reverse against your uh, tights and leggings. So that would be my first pick. I would make that as a summer version because it's lightweight I wouldn't have to line it and I could wear that with my pumps the second fabric I would try with the Nina dress pinafore is um, this stretch cord now this has got a lot quite a lot of stretch so then you would get more stretch around here and you would also get more stretch around the hips if you were sitting down for an office job or you were working where you sat down a lot. Um, this is by Lady McElroy. And you might be able to tell that by the print. Beautiful floral print, really high quality uh, definition on those prints. And it's got a sort of shine, a real, a vel it's got a very velvety smooth feel. Now, this one works well for the uh, a dress because it's got a bit of viscose in it. So rather than it being a stiff cord, a cord that you think of as a, as a jacket or a pair of trousers or a dungaree with a bib on, this has got a real fluidity to it. And that's because it's got 30% viscose. So it's 68% cotton, 30% viscose, 
and 2% spandex. If you look, if you um, click on this fabric below and start to scroll down and look what people have made with it, you'll see the range of items that people have made with it is quite huge. So people have made skirts, they've made a wrap dress, they've made a jacket, they've made um, a tunic. And it, it's got uh, a lot of uses this, more than you would imagine just cord to have. This has got that cord finish, but because it's got that drape, then it lends itself to more patterns. So I think this and this Nina Lee dress is actually the next thing on my sewing list. I really, really want that for winter and I want to wear it with grey boots. And I want to look really autumnal and silky and soft and beautiful. There are so many Dashwood Studio needle cord uh, patterns to enjoy. So this one is the 21 Well Baby Cord. There we are. And again, this is the one that has just the simple cotton feel. It's light. It's got obviously the nap and the directional print. So you need to make sure that you order enough of it. It's got a little bit of stretch, but that's just the weave. And I'm going to pair this one with a children's pattern that I really love, which is the Liberty Mabel tiered dress. Now, this is a summer dress, so this is cotton, and I don't think it would be suitable for needle cord. But again, a little bit like the Carnaby dress, there is a sleeveless version here. So if you make a sleeveless one, then you could wear it with a polo neck underneath, you could wear it with a long sleeve t-shirt underneath, so you could use it as autumn winter wear. The only thing I would say with this is, because of the large print, if I made uh, a sleeveless version, I would use a plain skirt and the sleeveless top because I think if I use the tiers, then I might keep cutting the butterflies in half and they would be all gathered up on the um, tiers and you wouldn't get to see the butterflies because they would be all in the gathers. So I would choose uh, the sleeveless, sleeveless top and the plain skirt. And there is a version of the sleeveless top under the uh, Liberty Mabel pattern. So if you click on it, you'll see the sleeveless version underneath Warmy Fruits and it does look absolutely beautiful. So that would be my pick for uh, a child's cord pinafore. If you do like the tears on this dress, is that if that's what attracts you to this pattern by having the, uh, the tears on the skirt, then you just need to pick uh, something with this ditzier smaller print so this is another Dashwood Studios 21 whale uh, cord and there it is if you gathered it and then you had another gather underneath you'd get the feeling of gathers but you're not interrupting the pattern and the design of the fabric this is beautiful this has a navy background and pink and an ochre, limey ochre colour. Really nice for winter. It's got that sort of winter palette. It's really sumptuous. So for a girl's pinafore, go for some uh, lovely prints with a sleeveless tiered skirt or a sleeveless plain skirt. My last children's wear pattern to show you is um, Simplicity 1447. This one um, goes up to two years as well. It's got quite a range on. It's got little uh, play suits, dresses, hats. It's for boys and girls, depending on which fabric you choose. But I really thought that I could choose something suitable in cord for both of these views. So for the boys view, I have chosen a plush really plush cord and it's it's really velvety you can, hope you can see from the texture can you see it's sort of got that sort of crush a crush velvet cord look to it it's really nice but it's really still hard working it's got a little bit of stretch in it 
and this one is 85% cotton, 12% polyester and 3% spandex so it's the spandex there that's giving it the little bit of stretch it's 55 inches wide and it comes in a whopping 28 different colours so um, if you are using this pattern for boys or girls and using it as a unisex pattern then you can um, really choose a colour that you like or that goes with things that go underneath so I've chosen this 21 well baby cord to make this for you here I also think that although this is in a gingham or a sear sucker fabric it can be made in a baby cord <clears throat> as we've talked about with the baby grow underneath with the long arms and this is again a 21 well baby cord look at that I love that so autumnal but not dark and dreary I think that would make the most beautiful sleeveless dress for the baby grow underneath it's lovely it's light it's got that feeling of cotton because it's a, this one is 100% cotton this comes in two colours a sort of light colourway like this and then a darker one this is 57 inches wide so it's very wide fabric you will get um, you won't need so much to cut it's really good for children's clothes the other colourway is a sort of navy so this one's called ivory and the other colourway is called navy um, and because it's 100% cotton it does press really well so you'll see the feature on the pattern is these little front pleats and that's how you get the shaping around the neck and because it's 100% cotton it will, this one will press really really well so these are my picks for children's clothes but just because I've chosen for children's clothes doesn't mean they have to be this baby cord although I've said I don't like using it for dungarees it does make nice pinafores so pinafores that have uh, a dress style baby cord works for those so this is a pinafore that I wear with thick tights it's got a bit of a sort of Scandinavian style this is lined so if you want to make a ladies pinafore like the York pinafore dress or uh, the ivy pinafore dress um, then baby cord works for that but you might need to line it My next fabric uh, pattern choices are for menswear, um, but that's not to say you can't find a women's shirt pattern to use for cord. So the first one I've chosen is something new to me. This one's by Birda. It's a men's pattern and I actually saw it um, from a Minerva maker. So I followed a fabric, clicked on it, and then I saw this lovely shirt pattern and it's Got a placket front so it's got a bit more of a casual look it's not just a normal shirt there were some really nice versions of it this is Birda style 7525 and I think it would look really nice in cord for winter you could use it as your over layer so you could have a t-shirt underneath and then you have the, the placket shirt over the top now this cord's a little bit different this has got that sort of crush look that the last one I showed had but this one um, unusually for cord is 97% polyester so this one if you were using it for menswear and they were wearing their shirt regularly you can wash it and it would dry quickly because of course cord takes a long time to dry so this one would make a really nice over shirt I thought with the placket front I've not made it but I think that this fabric and this pattern would make a really nice winter match for men. It would also make um, pinafores like I just talked about. So any uh, girls pinafores, women's pinafores that you can wear an office shirt underneath like um, formal pinafores. Uh, dungarees, there's lots to see. If you look up, if you click on this one below, there's lots to see. People have made a lot of different things with these kids things there's a nice um, Ariel skirt um, with 
this sort of buttons on that's really nice it's very popular because it's a very versatile fabric it comes in 28 different colors and it's 57 inches wide and the reason it's so versatile and has made a lot of different garments is because it's 15 whale so it's not that 21 whale baby cord that's like cotton and it's not that thick jumbo stuff this one is somewhere in the middle so if you're looking for that medium weight fabric then this is the medium cord that you might be looking for but this one is not cotton it is polyester my second shirt choice is a normal shirt no messing about this is McCall's M6044 you've got a short sleeve shirt you can use in the summer you've got uh, a cuffed and a uh, button flap top shirt which would look great in this cord that I'm going to show you there's ones with dress cuffs where you can wear cufflinks and there's one with a sort of little look a sort of cowboy vibe there so you could use uh, different cords there actually that would be really interesting and the fabric I've chosen is a 21 whale baby cord that's this one here this is a lovely lovely rust autumn rust colour I'm thinking that's when you would be wearing a cord shirt it comes in 30 different colors so you're not going to be forced to choose a color that your fella might not like or that he might not like if you're a male sewer it's definitely worth looking this one up 30 different colors surely you'll find one that you like it's non-stretch it's 56 inches wide and it would make great shirts for both men and women because it's got a really nice weight now when i say it's light i mean it actually it actually is light it doesn't feel heavy um so i think it would be great for a shirt it would also be good for a shirt dress like uh, the tilly and the buttons lyra dress would be nice in this a winter version um kids wear it would be good for any of those children's patterns that i've shown you today because it's light but it's got that nice furry baby cord finish so this baby cord is my top choice for McCall's M6044. My next pattern choices are for intermediate or more experienced sewers. So I'd like you guys to think about how you might use cord in those projects that require a higher skill level. Jackets, coats, jeans, uh, boot cut trousers, all of those things that have added skill level but where cord can really take it to another level and make a really beautiful item the fabric i'm going to show you is this seven whale cord and it's got a lovely velvety texture and one of the features of it is it's got 20 percent stretch in one direction so in that direction you get stretch but not in that direction and that means to me is screaming out to me jeans and trousers because you don't want a baggy knee you don't want stretch going down your legs where it's going to be um giving you a baggy knee but you might want this stretch to help you with the fit around the waist and the hips so the pattern i've chosen is the lander pants the lander trousers and you can have this with a button fly and i know at the beginning of the video i made a sort of tongue-in-cheek remark about uh, cord flares but actually cord in these wide leg star trousers do look really really cool they are quite timeless as well so you can make take the effort to make something like the lander trousers and they will last a long time this fabric comes in 28 different colors it's 97 percent cotton a little bit of elastine and it's also suitable for the jessa jeans by tilly and the buttons or uh, ginger jeans by closet core um or actually yeah the dawn jeans by megan nielsen which is what i'm wearing now so you can see that's quite a classic jean with the belt loops but in cord you get that sort of nice feeling of the nap and you need to make sure that you cut all of the pieces with the nap going downhill Again, you'll see very honest Minerva makers um, showing their mistakes on that. And it's worth reading them because they are giving you advice on uh, not cutting things with the nap going the wrong way. 
So my top picks for this chunkier cord, but not too chunky for trousers, in 28 different colours, is the Lander Pattern by Tree Bias or the Megan Nielsen Dawn Jeans. My next pattern choice for somebody wanting to really stretch themselves and have a really good sew is this pattern here, which I think is suitable for cord, which is Butterick 6793. It is a short autumn jacket, casual autumn jacket. You might see it better from the scheme. Let's see if I can do a bit of an in-focus picture. So it's got a seam running down the back and it's got this really nice um, sort of uh, feature on the front so you would have some of your cord running in one direction and all your other cord run not running normally so so this bit so this bit coming over your shoulder would get a slightly different color um, than the piece coming down the front so that way you'll be working with the nap you won't be working against the nap trying to get rid of the color differential you'll be actually trying to gain some of that nap feature to make the collar look slightly darker than the rest of the uh, jacket and the fabric i've chosen considering the pattern is very complex is actually what you probably think of as uh, just your classic cotton cord it's eight whale so if you think the last one we had stretch in it this one's got no stretch it's just a hundred percent cotton it comes in 10 colors it's your absolute standard cotton it looks a little pink on the screen but this really is a christmas red um it comes in 10 different colors it's 56 inches wide there's no stretch and um you can use it to make coats if you know you can get a really good fit on the lander pants you can actually use it for that but you won't get that element of stretch but if you know you don't want the stretch if you want your jeans to sort of hold you in then uh, this would work for jeans, it works for pinafores, it works for jackets, it works for lined coats as well. Um, have a look at this fa fabric online and look at the different things that people have made with it. Um, it's got a lot of um, makes tag to it because it is that classic cotton cord that we associate when we think about what cord is. And if someone said, do you like sewing with cord? We're like, mm, it's okay, because we think of this one. This one that's thick, quite firm to sew, limiting maybe in our minds. But if we think of cord as a wider uh, range of fabrics, then we can really explore different patterns and different fabric combos. But for this fabric, I think you could make a cracking autumn jacket. My last two picks are a little bit maverick because you wouldn't necessarily um, search for cord and get that uh, search to be very successful because this fabric is called a velour rib. So you're getting that rib texture, but you're getting much more of a furry stretch velour fabric. So I will show it you, it's absolutely amazing. And what made me love this is actually um, a project on there by the crafty professor there is the most beautiful top on there so it's got stretch in um, this direction look but it's also got stretch in the other direction not so much it's a five whale velour rib so if you're the sort of person who likes the finish of cord but you want the element of drape and stretch you can get that from this because it's got um, polyester and it. it's got 15% polyester and I think if you like the larger sleeve of sort of billowy sleeve like this this is from the Billy sweatshirt dress but this version here uh, or this one here with the larger balloon sleeves can be made with this velour rib. So you get the sort of the velvety light and dark highlights, shine and shadows from this fabric. 
and but you can also use it for the billowy sleeve so this is the billy pattern but it's just in a different fabric so you would get that there but you would also get the sort of shine and shadow in where the um, gathers are with the shine and shadow of the fabric really interesting i only spotted this as i was looking and researching some cord fabrics to show you guys and i saw it and i thought oh that's different that's for somebody who doesn't like the stiffness of cord but likes making stretch clothes really nice for girls clothes as well like a little girl's sweatshirt and um, because it's not stiff you can also use it for the billy hat so if you make the billy sweatshirt that has the little frill on the shoulder it works for that and the crafty professor's sweatshirt has a big frill down the front and it's really lovely you must look it up so if you click on this fabric you'll see what other people have made with it and you'll see that beautiful sweatshirt so this one great for people who like stretch knit comfy clothes and uh, great for kids clothes too and it comes in a lot of different colors so that evening casual stretch knit garment can be made with this and I'm pairing it with the Billy sweatshirt okay it's my final pick this is uh, a fabric by Lady McElroy and um, I, you know I'd like to say it's my favorite one but I love so many of them but I really do like this as a cord with some very different features so it's a very fine cord i mean i'd say it's more than 21 whales even it's just got a very fine rib texture which makes it quite velvety can you see how i'm getting the highlights there you go but look at this cord it's draped it's because it is 70 percent cotton and 30 percent viscose which means you're getting that drape you don't normally get in cord that's why i saved these two till last it comes in four different colors berry coffee gray and ochre it's got a small print on which is quite useful if you're making a pinafore or a dress or a blouse or a shirt because you're not having to worry about cutting into a large pattern repeat so this has got quite a small pattern repeat on it and it is the drapiest of cords and for that reason I've chosen a ladies shirt which is McCall's 7900 if you check that out you'll see the one that I've made in a cotton poplin but I would have loved to have made it in this this is such a lovely autumn colour palette the pattern um, has got a lot of different views so there is short sleeve, sleeveless, elasticated, um, ruffles on the shoulders, um, uh, a little ruffle around the neck, which I tried, which looks beautiful. So it's a really, really versatile pattern, a pattern that will give you lots of views. I actually chose it for me and my daughter because I thought she could wear this cropped short one and this one would be more for me. So we are getting a lot of use out of it because we're using it for more than one person in our family. But this fabric has got the ability to make these ruffles, which is why I've chosen it. It's absolutely lovely. I think I've kind of ended on a near favorite. Those are my top 10 patterns for sewing with cord. I hope I've shown you a good range of men's wear, children's wear, ladies wear and fab, uh, patterns that beginners can have a go at right up to really experienced sewers. I also hope that I've shown you that cord isn't just that one stiff fabric that's used for dungarees but actually there are a range of cords or cord lookalikes um, that can be used for many different garments. The best way to find out all the different garments that can be made with cord is to click on any of the products below and have a look at what Minerva makers have been making. They are really honest in their reviews, they tell you what problems they've come across um, and they will give you a lot of information before you choose which cord to buy. Don't forget to post your projects if you've made anything in cord, we'd love to see what you've been making 
and if you have any comments or questions you can put those below and we can try and answer your questions so that you can choose the best fabric for your project thank you very much for watching i hope you'll join me again for a fabric and pattern pairing video very soon.